Well, this seems like an interesting bit of news that happened about five or six days ago, but I'm getting around to it now. I'm sure you already know if you're messing around with PC gaming, but Intel's, all right, Intel tells core i7-7700K owners to stop overclocking to avoid high temperatures. Kind of seems like it comes with the territory, but there's a bit more to it than one would perceive. Uh, some owners of the Intel Core 7700K and the normal 7700, the locked processor, uh, have been complaining for the past three months of unusual temperature increases. According to user accounts, temperatures sometimes spike up to 90 Celsius, close to the Core i7-7700's maximum 100 Celsius threshold. Intel finally offered up a response to the complaint, though the answer is not sitting well with the affected users. In an ongoing thread on Intel's community forums, a spokesman for Intel offered up the following response. Get ready for this, kids. We appreciate your feedback you have provided and your patience as we investigate this behavior. The reported behavior of the i7 generation Intel Core 7700K processor showing momentary temperature changes from the idle temperature is normal while completing a task like opening a browser or application or program. That seems kind of crazy that it would go that high opening fucking Chrome. In our initial investigation, we did not observe temperature variations outside of our expected behavior and recommended specifications. For processor specifications, please refer to the Intel Core i7-7700K processor product specifications. Most motherboard manufacturers offer customizable fan speed control settings that may allow for a smoother transition of fan revolutions per minute RPMs. Please consult your motherboard manufacturer manual or website for instructions on how to change the default fan speed control setting. We do not recommend running outside of the processor's specifications, such as by exceeding processor frequency or voltage specifications or removing of the integrated heat spreader, sometimes called delitting. These actions will void your processor's warranty. Yeah, so if you delid your shit and decide to put in some sort of better thermal or God forbid, you actually take the time to figure out how to solder the shit yourself, it would probably take a lifetime. That will void your warranty. But I think major overclockers don't give a shit anyway. They're professional overclockers. For the Toulon didn't read version is that everything checks out on Intel's end and users should not overclock their 7700K processors, which have unlocked multipliers specifically for overclocking. That's what you pay the K for. It's fucking expensive as shit, Lord knows. As you might imagine, Intel's response did not sit well with users. The first response to Intel's post from a ticked off customer who has sworn off Intel products, and I quote, three months waiting for Intel to come out with a solution, and now this, this is all you can say? We know already what you just said. You know what? Never mind. This will be my last product from Intel, the user wrote. Another user called Intel's response BS. Nothing that some 7700K processors run even hotter than the AMD bulldozer overclocked to five gigahertz. That's irony right there. I mean, I, I was gonna make a joke about that, but now I can't because it's right there. It's kind of funny, like for real, outside of this article, I know I'm not sticking to the story, but when I think about it, everybody made fun of AMD's like graphics cards and processors for running too hot. You want to like heat your house in the winter, get an AMD CPU. You know, that was the joke. And now look what's happened. I mean, look what the fuck's happened. And with like the AMD graphics cards, do you remember the joke about them never having drivers and the AMD drivers are shit? And now it's total role reversal. Like my computer with the AMD graphics card, no issues. Put in the graphics card, run and done. Nvidia, every time you upgrade the drivers i swear to god like a week or so later there'll be a hot fix now or nvidia will put out a driver that'll screw up an sli profile or nvidia will put up a driver that'll black screen your computer then you gotta roll it back or blue screen like if i oh man if you want to be up to date on nvidia i suggest you join the geforce forums like for real if you have a card that isn't a 10 series and if you have a 10 series it would benefit you to go to the nvidia forms and read up on the driver releases and see what people have to say before you download them because so many times i've seen people just update and then get shit on and then they're like what the hell's on my computer and i'm like uh did you read the fucking form to make sure the driver's okay no nvidia said the driver's okay i'm like fuck that 
Nvidia would tell me they didn't kill my mother. Meanwhile, they'd have her blood on her hands. Uh, another quote, I don't even have a major issue like everyone else is having. However, after Intel's response just now, they're not getting another penny out of me. I'm going to sell my Intel stuff and go rising. Yet another user wrote. All right, that guy is pissed with a capital IST. Uh, to Intel's credit, some users experiencing the issue have admitted to delitting their processor. One reason this is done is so cooling solutions can be applied directly to the CPU die, but it's a risky process that can result in a dead chip. Removing the IHS can also render certain coolers incompatible as they were designed with the height of the IHS in mind. Another motivating factor is to replace the shock thermal compound that Intel uses between the die and the ISH. Intel has also never stated that it would warranty processors that have been overclocked or overvolted, though it does offer an overclocking warranty as a separate purchase. What a bunch of cocksuckers. I, I didn't even notice that. And I have a 40, what I have, a 4790K that I've overclocked a couple times at damn near 500 gigahertz as dicks. However, that isn't the part that has users all riled up. They're ticked because Intel basically shrugged off the temperature spike as being normal and telling them to run their unlocked CPUs at stock settings rub salt in the wound, which, uh, yeah, considering you pay, what is it, 50 extra bucks for that fucking K, dude, to have it unlocked for overclocking specifically, it's really dickish. Let's face it, Ryzen has completely circumvented this by making sure all of their CPUs are unlocked, and Intel would rather jerk your dick off and punch you in the taint and tell you it loves you. So I understand why everybody is pissed. Um, I know the other thing most people say is, Hey, Intel doesn't solder their CPUs. And you're right, they don't. I did read an article on that, on that where uh, someone did a great deal of research to um, see how the process would roll. And it's a lot more intricate than we perceive or know about. So, you know, they're saying cut Intel some slack. But on the other hand, it's a premium CPU and you're paying a premium price. Intel CPUs aren't even cheap. Like the i7, to me, feels like it's a premium CPU because it's very expensive and it's only four fucking cores of eight threads at a time when we should have moved on to eight cores being the standard or six at least being the minimum or something. But you know, I digress. The fact that you're paying this much and they don't even have the gall to at least solder it for you and considering AMD somehow manages to do this shit with Ryzen, like come the fuck on. But you know, whatever, fuck it, I guess, you know? What are you gonna do? And if you're experiencing the temperatures with, uh, the 7700K, I feel for you personally. Uh, I know, because I know my 4790K. Oh my god. Oh, now that I think about it, oh, that thing used to get so hot. It used to get so hot when... This is right. I remember when I opened browser before I put my water cooler on it. Oh my fuck, dude. And even with the water cooler, I would see spikes. It, this has been going on with Intel CPUs for a while. Now that I'm thinking about it, when I was like overclocking my CPU and just monitoring what it was doing. So yeah, screw it. And personally, uh, my next bet would be a Ryzen CPU. Hell, I may even, might even wait till the revision of Ryzen drops. SK Hynix GDDR6 memory will release in 2018. That their GDDR6 memory will release in 2018, coming with two times the speed of GDDR5 while operating with 10% lower voltages. The company has stated that their new GDDR6 memory will be based on 20 nanometer memory manufacturing processes and offer 16 gigabits of memory bandwidth per pin. This will allow GDDR6 based GPUs to offer memory bandwidths of up to 768 gigabits of memory bandwidth when using 384-bit memory bus, which is a huge gain in performance when compared to the Titan XP, which is currently offering 548 gigabits of memory bandwidth using the same bus size on a GDDR5X. This will deliver users some huge benefits, not just in performance, but also in forms of power savings, as fewer chips will be required to maintain the same level of memory bandwidth, and each chip will consume less power and therefore produce less heat. In the GPU market, the move for GDDR6 will be huge, though it remains to be seen whether GDDR6 or HBM2 will be the dominant in the high-end GPU market. GDDR6 
will be easier to implement given HBM2's need for direct to chip communication via the interposer. Though HBM2 also offers a benefit of lower latency and increased levels of bandwidth and capacity per pin, at the time it is uncertain whether HBM2 or GDDR6 will become the dominant of the GPU market moving forward as both memory types certainly have their benefits. With the early 2018 release plan, it is also likely that NVIDIA will be releasing their upcoming Volta series GPUs using GDDR6 memory, though it remains to be seen whether or not NVIDIA plans to create an HBM2 powered consumer GPU. Now this is an interesting conundrum, but then again, not really at least not from my perspective as I sit here and think about it. If you've been paying attention to the GPU market and if you've been on my channel, obviously you have, you already possibly know about the leaked rumors from the same source that said uh, Fury X would be in limited quantities when it launched, which we're talking like, what, two years ago? Remember when the Fury X came out and there was only so many to go around? Well, apparently AMD is going to have the same issue with HBM2. And I assume that could possibly be an issue considering the low yield for it. There aren't that many. That's why it's probably taking so goddamn long. The rumor is right now that HBM2 for AMD's Rise, I mean, sorry, AMD's Vega chip, Ugh, AMD's Vega graphics cards are only gonna have like 16,000 models, supposedly. That's the rumor I've been hearing. And that made me sit there and think like, oh man, that would be real bad. Like if that actually happens, then we're gonna have another one of those issues where the card will come out and there's gonna be price gouging all over the place. You know, if you really want one, you're probably gonna have to pay like an extra hundred bucks or more. I know Amazon will be just full of those sort of douchebags. But that brings me back to my point. GDDR6 is going to be an alternative to HBM2, no doubt about it. And I think Nvidia has enough brain power to know that HBM2 probably won't be readily available. Most likely, the way I see it, Nvidia will probably go GDDR6 for all the graphics cards for Volta whenever it launches. I'm thinking next year, but everybody's swearing this year. So let's say Volta launches GDDR6, boom, bang, bang, all right? All the graphics cards up to the, what is it gonna be, 2080, because they're fucking weird, is gonna be a, uh, GDDR6 powered GPU. And I figure if they do use HBM2, then it would probably be the Titan version or the Titan V, whatever they wanna call it, will have HBM2. And maybe the 2080 Ti will have HBM2, possibly, if they do actually grab it. But who's to say? This is speculation on my part. Okay, theory number two. Let's say Nvidia launches Volta this year. All right, let's say they go crazy and all the rumors are right and NVIDIA launches this fall or whatever. I would then say either A, all the graphics cards from the 2060 to the 2080 will be GDDR5X. Then the 2080 Ti and the Titan V or whatever the fuck they're gonna call it, XV, whatever, will be either HBM2 or GDDR6. That's my prediction. But then most likely, they probably go GDDR6 because let's face it, GDDR6 and GDDR memory as a whole is easier to produce and get a hold of versus HBM2. And I'm sure, but then it's Nvidia. If they could put HBM2 on a 2080 Ti or a Titan XV or a Titan V, whatever the fuck they call the next Titan card, they would and the price would go way higher. You know, like the Founders Edition versions would be like, it would be $800 for the Titan, no, not the Titan, like the Titan would be probably 1500 on those jackass, and the 2080 Ti would probably be like 800 Founders Edition, shitty ass blower style. And people would pay. Oh, they'd pay. This is also with the caveat that AMD does poorly. Like if Vega comes out and it doesn't do for graphics cards what it did for CPUs with Ryzen, then Nvidia will price gouge like crazy, per as usual. So we're talking worst case scenario with the price I just gave. Long and short of it is, I honestly believe Nvidia will probably make a move for GDDR6 due to HBM not being that readily available. HBM not being that readily available will affect it AMD because they won't have as many graphics cards out they're going to have half the amount they had for Fury X, rumor says, and if that's true, it'll be disastrous for them. And I, for one, I don't even know. Like, I would be very disappointed, personally. And, frankly, that's going to do it for me because this video is too long. I really want to try to keep these at 10 minutes. Sometimes I think I want to shoot for 5, but I always screw up and I go way farther. So, uh, let's move on from that. Uh, you know, can't actually give more of a fuck than me. 
rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to, you know, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, all that other garbage I'm on that I can't even remember. Follow him if you want to. If not, fuck it, dude. No obligation. No habla espanol. Adios, pichachos.